Chapter Four. You may miss the bride. It was the first day of the marriage ceremonial week. Today, as was the custom, Jacob and Rachel would sit like king and queen under a decorated ark as the celebrations run into the night. Afterwards, the two would consummate their marriage. The sound of drumming filled the air as Rachel sat still, for female servants to decorate her face and hair. Leah had never seen Rachel look this beautiful. Neatly braided with precious pearls, her curly locks sat like a crown on her head. Bracelets of gold hung on her wrists, and earrings studded with expensive ornaments dangled down the sides of her face. Leah tried to imagine how she might look in the cream lining tunic with a gold trim. Life wasn't fair. Mother would be proud, she said through her choked voice, hoping to ease the tension in the room. Oh, Leah. I fear that I cannot be happy today, for it would offend you. Rachel's betrothal had put a strain on their relationship. She now paraded herself as a married woman, giving orders and finding fault with things that didn't concern her. Leah forced a smile. You mustn't feel that way, Rachel. Our ancestors have smiled on you. I only hope you will be happy. Rachel's eyes sparkled. Oh, I will, Leah. I do love Jacob. She stood for a maid to tie a golden sash around her slender waist. The last seven years have been tormenting, with father keeping a special watch on us. Leah wondered if her sister realized what this day would mean for her. A flood of contempt swept through her. Rachel had always been a selfish child who thought only of herself. But I must be strong. Leah told herself. It is what mother would want. She set the veil over Rachel's head and placed a kiss through it to her cheeks. Our ancestors watch over your marriage, and may Yahweh bless you with sons. Rachel went out to the feast to meet her husband. All through the day, Leah sat aloof in the tent room she had shared with Rachel since infanthood. The greatest shame a maiden could bear had befallen her, but there was nothing father could do now. He had kept his word and respected the contract. It was indeed a curse having a younger sister like Rachel. Many young women her age in the community and those surrounding were married and settled, even those with lesser prospects. Her one hope, Jacob, was her biggest disappointment. Leah, she jolted out of her misery at the sound of her father's voice. Be prepared. Tonight, you will wed Jacob. Wed Jacob? Has he had a change of heart? Well. He asks for my daughter's hand in marriage, and I have two. Naturally, I'm giving him my first. Father, house child, get dressed. This is my household, and Jacob will do what is proper if he chooses to dwell with us. He doesn't want me, father. Leah's eyes welled with tears she had fought hard to hold back all day. Let Rachel have her husband," she said through her teeth. "Jacob is hardly the last man alive." She would wait for her own man. She had already set aside her naive dream of a heart-throbbing romance, and was ready to embrace whatever man showed interest in her. Besides, she had spent the last seven years smothering every last emotion she ever entertained for Jacob. Don't be a fool. Who do you suppose will want you now? Leah searched her father's worried face, and fear gripped her heart. Did he worry about her welfare, or was he trying to get rid of her? She couldn't tell. 
Laban stepped aside for a young servant girl carrying a pile of fine garments. Zilpah will say to you, Bear him sons, and he will grow to love you. He placed a quick kiss on her forehead and left the tent. And just like that, her world was about to change. She would be married. Tonight. But Jacob, he would not be pleased with this. She ran her fingers through the beautiful gold-trimmed garment. It was the very one Rachel wore only moments ago. <laughs> <laughs> Leah sobbed in despair, pacing the room. I cannot do this. The man is not blind. But he's drunk. Zilpa muttered under her breath. Leah stopped her pacing and fixed her gaze on the servant girl. Zilpa lifted her eyes to meet Leah's and added, the night is far spent, and the men are drunk, my lady. Suddenly, her father's plans unfolded before her eyes. It was dark, and Jacob was drunk. Once he lay with her, the bond would be made. The rest would be history. She would be spared this shame. She beckoned. Quick, help me get dressed. Her mind buzzed with all the possible outcomes of this decision. What would Jacob's reaction be? What about Rachel? Whatever became of this would be far more bearable than the despair of never getting married. What other use was there in being a woman? A woman's work should not lie at the mercy of a man's attention. Her mother's words resounded in her heart. She shook her head. They were the words of a woman happily settled in her own home. A pang of guilt hit her belly and she felt sorry for Rachel. No, she didn't. How many years had she endured being overlooked? Jacob was her consolation. A new hope rose up in her as she dressed. Perhaps Jacob could come to love her after all. The gods reward father. When the time was due, father came to escort her to the feast. Leah drew the veil over her face and kept her head low. Hurry! Laban said, pulling her along. What did you do with Rachel? Not to worry. Rachel is a strong girl. They arrived at the scene of Jacob and other young men singing out of pitch. Young men! Laban announced. Let him alone! It is now time for the groom to be with his bride. The men hailed and cheered as Laban placed Leah's hand in Jacob's. Leah froze, her heart pounding. Jacob tightened his hold and led her to the new tent Laban had pitched for them. You are very quiet, my love, Jacob said through his drowsy state. Sing to me. Leah didn't dare speak a word, and it turned out no words were needed. Jacob was eager for his wife, and before long, the bond was made.